is up humanoid nation today's video we're reacting to is by the youtube channel the black lion it's the flash season seven is utterly unwatchable rant uh, i think season seven is when they introduced the three um no four whatever the hell they were like the speed forces the mother was one this other dude was the speed force flat future force i don't know it was confusing then they got this one Hulk looking thing that was like the worst CGI I ever had. And this Dr. Octopus looking guy with tentacles coming out. It was weird. I haven't seen the last season yet. I have to watch that. I'm on the season before that. But season seven was just weird. It was really weird introducing for him. And then next season, Iris gets kidnapped through some kind of bullshit that the Speed Force becomes evil and then they become good i don't know it was weird cisco left the main the greatest character on the show left and it got replaced by what's his name but he's hilarious but anyways let's watch this let's do this for years now the flash's fandom has said the same thing over and over again the show hasn't been good since season two it hasn't recaptured the magic of the first two seasons and the current season is the worst one yet by far now this is something that I never really agreed with. I always thought season three. Although I do hate Iris, I don't know why she just annoys me. Ever since joining the team, I don't know. She's just really annoying, and like I just skip through anything that she's in. It's like how many times can you save Iris? God damn, because she gets saved more than Lois Lane. Three was a lot better than people gave it credit for. I mean, looking back, it seems like most people do now agree. Season 3 wasn't that bad, in fact, it was pretty good. I always thought Season 4 was the best looking season of The Flash, and it has my favorite episode, Enter Flash Time. And while Season 5 definitely looks pretty bad, and it has a bad villain, the season long storyline isn't bad at all. However, now that we're in Season 7, I have to agree with what most people are saying, that this is the worst season of The Flash, but not only that, I find it to be so much worse than anything The Flash has ever given us before the crisis. Oh, is, it, is this the one where Iris gets put into the mirrorverse? That was awful! That it's utterly unwatchable. Everything up the until the- Especially was what's his name from Heroes. That Indian guy was in Heroes and then plays basically the same character, but he's evil. Crisis was at least watchable. Some of it wasn't great, some of it was great, but most of it was something that I did enjoy and I was- That guy, that guy. It wasn't great, some of it was great, but most of it was something that I did enjoy. This dude right here, I loved him in Heroes, he was great. In this in this show, he was alright. He just, oh my god, his acting was bad. And I was attached to the characters, but ever since the crisis happened, the second half of season 6, and especially the god-awful season that we're having right now, season 7, I have trouble getting through every single episode. I'm having trouble getting through even certain scenes. I've skimmed through a lot of it. And the main reason for this, or there are a couple main reasons, but I think the biggest one is the terrible, terrible supporting cast. So I no longer care about really a single character on the show except for Barry Allen and maybe Iris West just because she's important to the Flash's universe. But in terms of- Yeah, in the show, yeah, but it, yeah, they just make it so much. Oh God, I gotta stop shitting on iris the show itself it's really just a barry allen which is detrimental to a show that really really likes to put its main character on the sidelines really really likes to focus on these them going back cast, to the 90s getting stuck in the 90s was great awful for the show and this also includes the characters who were at least at one point fan favorites and beloved characters like cisco ramon who was amazing in seasons one and two he had no connection to the flash in the comics but they really really connected him to it they really made him a staple of the flash at least in this world but ever since like season three ended all right i love his goodbye scene just like about to sing his jam and just barry just goes in and like was the worst singing rendition ever even though can barry can actually even though grand guston can actually sing Cisco has it's done hilarious. really like nothing this, interesting like and while his heartfelt goodbye in season seven was well done he should have that, that episode really should have came out in like season four or something because ever since then he's done nothing interesting and it just feels like he loses his powers, gets the back in power, loses his powers again. The beginning. This also goes for Caitlyn, but instead of doing nothing interesting, her storylines have been just awful 
since season three. I love the idea of Caitlyn, one of Barry's best friends, turning evil and turning into Killer Frost because of that uh, dynamic and that emotional impact. That her that father was have. an evil But bicycle. then they went back on that, and in season four, she became a good guy. And ever since then, this is an idea that I've hated. And she's always been a character, basically ever since season three, that the writers just keep on running out of things to do for her. So they keep on creating new drama, new storylines. Like recently in season seven, this has been the worst ever. They've given Frost a lot to do in season seven, and I don't think that's a good thing. Oh, First, yeah, they the split twins. Caitlyn and, and, and Frost up, which has been really weird but also that's definitely not the worst thing the worst things are the trial of the killer frost storyline which like really the cw had the gall to lecture us and the people of the show and the characters in the show about giving people second chances when they fired hartley sawyer from the show because i know right what bullshit yeah fire harley because of what he said on twitter and they don't bring him back you only have like one episode where some other guy is dressed as him. It's just, it's just, it's just weird, man. Come on. Because of something that he tweeted like ten years ago. That's the thing with cancel culture. Doesn't matter if it's ten, twenty years ago. People are like, oh, he's done with. Even though he's older now. It's it, the cancel culture is just stupid, man. It's honestly so ridiculous. But that's not even the worst thing we got from Frost this season. The worst thing is Chillblain. Which is Who? the oh, most this sexualized asshole. character in the Arrowverse ever somehow, and his relationship slash weird romance that he's had with Frost. It's so creepy, it's so weird. I don't understand what they're doing with the character. They had this idea to make her a good guy in season four, and ever since then they've just done the weirdest things ever. And I don't think that was ever a good idea in the first place. I mean they took a character named Killer Frost who is a killer, mm -hmm. and they thought, yeah, let's make that character a good guy. Captain Cold makes sense, I guess. He's always had a code. He doesn't have killer in his name. Other characters make sense, but Killer Frost, I mean, come on. It's in let's the name, really Killer here. Frost. This never would have worked, and it really does Can doesn't. you imagine if Killer Croc was a good guy? But nah, they did it with Killer Frost. And Season 7 has had the worst of it so far. So Ralph was unjustly kicked off the show, which really, really pissed me off because it was just so unfair to Ralph and Sue's actors because they really were promised much more than they ended up getting. I wanted to see the wedding. But maybe it's for the best. Maybe these characters would have fell victim to what the rest of the cast has fell victim to, which is just turning into bad characters. But uh, I do think they had a lot of potential, maybe even in their own spin-off show. But it really makes the CW look even worse than it already does because they have all these storylines of villains or bad people turning good. Even Ralph himself was a crooked cop who turned into a hero. But then they have the goal to kick somebody off the show because of something he tweeted 10 years ago. It's something that really, really pissed me off. I never really talked about it in a video, but it's something that I really, really just, I don't respect the CW at all. And that's one of the reasons. But anyway, there's also a Joe who hasn't done anything interesting in years, and Cecile, who is pretty. You know, I just say I find that Joe. It's kind of I like Joe. I just find it weird that hey, I raised Barry as a son all these years, and I have no problem with him marrying my daughter, even though I call him son. Even uh, Wally West said in that one episode, it's like, oh, he's she, he's my brother, marrying my sister. And the guy, and the other dude talking to him didn't even bat an eye. He's like, oh, okay. And she, she is super overused. Like, she should not have nearly as many storylines or screen time as she does. And her appearance rate should really just be relegated to whenever there's a trial or whenever we see Joe at home. And that's really it. And she definitely should have never gotten powers because why the hell does she have powers? Yeah, then that's what I was wondering. Why did she get powers? Distances baffle me, which is Chester and Allegra. Chester, Chester obviously Allegra. is supposed to be a replacement for Cisco. He's always behind the monitor, coming up with the plans. He's the nerdy one. He makes all these pop culture references. He's a bit awkward. He's just Cisco 2.0. But yeah. Cisco, like I said, he didn't really have anything to do past season four. His existence also didn't really need to happen past season four. So to replace him in season 7, or I guess season 6, with a worse version of the character, it makes no sense. I don't say he's the worst version of the character. Cisco was pretty amazing. Can't really, like, uh, step up to that. Because, like, if you introduce a new character and you gotta, like, be like Cisco, that's gonna be a tough thing to do. Because Cisco is beloved. He's been there since the beginning. Chester, he has his own thing. He's smart as hell. But I enjoy him. I have no qualms with Chester. I like Chester and Allegra's relationship. It's really cute. 
even though sometimes I can't stand certain romances, but Chester and Allegra, make, it makes me root for them. I like to see them together. To whatsoever, and Chester has really added nothing to the show. He's, in fact, yeah. worse in the show. To the point where, I mean, you forget, like, important things about the character because who the fuck cares about him? Yeah. I remember scrolling through Reddit a couple weeks ago Very where somebody true. asked why Chester doesn't use his black hole powers or could he use his black hole powers in this specific way, and it blew my mind. Wait, the didn't he need to get rid of his black hole powers because he was in some kind of storage thing? I thought that... So he had his powers all this time and he never uses them? Is that what you're telling me? I seriously thought he got... he. He got rid of his powers. What the hell is going on here? Because I completely forgot about that. I completely forgot he has the black hole powers. Because one, he never uses them, but also two, exactly. because I don't give a crap about this character. I don't care about anything he's done or anything he ever will do. Then there's Allegra, who is even worse somehow. I don't, uh, man, Allegra is pretty f cool. She's awesome. She has a attitude and I like it, but yeah, she's pretty awesome. So I think we can all agree that Allegra is a pointless character, right? Hey. I mean, whenever she is on screen, she's just in the background doing nothing. There are a couple episodes where she just doesn't appear and nobody noticed because, I mean, it it's has Allegra. the same effect of her just being in the background. She has no personal relationships that are interesting, no good dynamics that would bring any interest to the show, and her storylines are completely forgettable, which all came together to episode 14, Rayo Deleuze, I think that's how you pronounce it, which is the lowest rated episode on IMDb ever. Despite the fact that, I mean, Love's a Battlefield is... Alright, I admit it, that was a really bad episode with her cousin. Uh, her cousin's awesome. Her powers are awesome, but this one, this episode was... Eh. Worse, it's just that at least that episode features Barry and Iris and all the other characters that we care about. This episode is not an episode of The Flash. It's an episode about Allegra, where, I mean, even inside the storyline, there's some bad acting, some bad effects, some bad writing, I mean, terrible writing... But, I mean, just the fact that it features Allegra, a character clearly nobody cares about, is why it's the lowest rated episode of the show ever. I wouldn't say nobody and cares about. Whenever there's a storyline involving one of the characters that doesn't directly involve Barry Allen, I tend to want to skip it, and I do skip it. Just look at the latest Godspeed episode. Everything that had to do with Allegra and her cousin and Caitlin working on her with the surgery... I skipped through all of that, and I don't feel like I missed anything. Anything to do with Frost and Chillblain. I didn't skip it, but I cringed through it somehow. I managed to get through it, despite it being... I gotta say, the only things I skip is the Irish West scenes with Barry. There's too much cringy love there. Too much cringy love. I know, oh, I'm gonna get hate from this from the people who love Barry, West, and Iris. Being some of the worst TV I've ever seen. And that was in one of the... what is generally considered the better episodes of season seven yeah, where some people were, were like oh this is a return to form but no when two out of the three storylines are either things that you want to skip through or you cringe through and then even the main storyline is not as good as it could be that episode isn't good the episode 15 at the uh, enemy enemy at the gates is not a good episode it's just good for season seven somehow and that really goes to show how awful season seven has been how unwatchable the show is at this point now, I don't think that this would be as big of a problem. Like, again, if the supporting cast is better, obviously that would be very helpful. But also, I think that if the supporting cast's role was diminished, if they had less storylines and Barry had more of a front and center role, then also the show would be, would be better. But I don't think either of those things would solve uh, the other big problem, which is the character of Barry Allen, and how seven years in and seven seasons in, he still feels like a sidekick he still feels like he hasn't come into his own like in season one it made sense harrison wells was giving him all the pointers harrison wells was experienced while well, he wasn't but ever see every season since then it slowly became more and more annoying why does barry not know what he's doing at this point why is he always taking advice from others why can he not come up with any of his the plans on his own and why is he in the field always having somebody in his ear it really really is highlighted by a show like superman and lois where when Superman goes out into the field... Alright, I gotta go on a little rant. Well, not a rant, I just gotta say. I, the Superman and Lois show... Ugh, I really don't like it. I love Superman, but this Superman and Lois show is kind of... Offish? I just don't know. The first season was... Oh, I had to... Uh, it felt like a chore to watch this goddamn show. The first season. 
Then the second season when they brought Steel in, it was kind of all right. Season three is like the bizarre world, I think. Or I don't know. It's confusing. He knows what he's doing. He never has anybody in his ear telling him what to do. But he knows. Plus, the Superman is in a not in the same universe as the Flash. They mentioned it in one episode, like you're the only superhero in this planet. So it's a the multiverse. They're in a different world, even though he sh showed up in Supergirl. But that Superman is a different one because multiverse mumbo jumbo wibbly wobbly timey wimey i don't know knows what he's doing and yeah he has like 13 years on barry in terms of experience but i don't think 20 versus 7 is really that big of a uh, of a difference especially everything that barry's gone through in the last seven years he should know what he's doing he should be the one who's the leader he should come up with the plans but he just doesn't and it really really bothers me it's always bothered me like ever since season like three or four he should have started doing this but he's they just they can't get away from the same formula that, that, that they iris had in is in trouble one, we must save her. which is so dated for how many seasons we are into the show this is also highlighted not only by superman and lois but also by the second episode of season seven the speed of thought which is easily the best episode so far where Barry unlocks the ability speed thinking and finally starts acting like he should. Uh, there is the emotional detachment, but I don't think the emotional detachment needs to happen with the speed thing, and they can just remove that and keep the speed thinking. He just has to learn how to master it and be an emotionally attached person. But with the speed thinking, he finally starts acting like he should. He's a genius. He's the one coming up with the plans. He knows what he's doing. He knows how to manipulate his powers so that he can really win and defeat anybody super easily. And that's when he really felt like the Flash. He felt like a powerful main character. But then they just took it away at the end of the episode because of the quote-unquote emotional detachment. Which is like, I mean, come on. They finally hit the mark with how Barry should act and how he should be the Flash. And then they just threw it away, and the rest of the season, he's... But Flash is not really fit for emotional detachment. That's more of a Batman thing. The Flash is always, like, joking around, being smart. He needs emotion. He's very... Barry and Wally, because the original... The other Flash, I'm just saying, that's a Batman thing for Batman to do, emotional detachment. Attachment. Starts acting again how he did previously where he doesn't know what he's doing which so pisses me off Now both of those things are also technically true for other seasons like it is the worst ever in season 7 The supporting cast has never been this bad and Barry not being at his best is also never been as annoying But there's one thing that is really exclusive to season 7 which are the awful storylines that they chose to go with it starts with the Mirror Monarch ending storyline, which is Corona. They weren't oh, able to finish the last one. three episodes. Was... Or, yeah, three yeah, episodes. Yeah, the Mirrorverse. Put it here. But uh, I think that it is also connected to Season 6B. It's all just awful. Mirror Monarch was a terrible villain. Yeah. But getting into Season 7 itself. Oh my god, was... this this monstrosity. Oh, the first time I saw this, I go, oh, I had to walk away from the screen. Go do something else and come back and make sure that I'm actually seeing this shit. Because just look at this. God. <laughs> the, the CGI was way better in the first couple se first season, second season. And then it was alright. But then when you got to this shit right here. It's supposed to be the first half of season seven. The, the Force Quest storyline. Force Quest, yeah. I mean, anybody who's watched it knows how awful it was. How cringy it was. But, I mean, it's a storyline that was bad in the comics, so I don't understand why they wanted to adapt it. I remember reading it when the comics initially came out. I think it was, like, a little bit after the Godspeed storyline, like, maybe, like, a couple months later or, like, a year later or something. But I remember reading it and thinking that this is, like, the worst the Flash comics have ever been. I read the entirety of the Flash run from the New 52 till Rebirth and then after Rebirth as well, so basically all of it. And the Force Quest, I can say, is easily the worst thing that the comics have done in the entirety of that run, which is... Okay, I've never seen... I've never read a Flash comic book. I know of the Flash. Okay, I've read some Flash comic books. But you're telling me this is what Fuerza looks like instead of that hideous monstrosity that we just saw? 
Oh my god. They is easily the worst thing that the comics have done in the entirety of that run, which is like like 10 years of comics. And it's and just Psych. really Barry going around the world, finding these like avatars. Psych of, looks even better the forces, in comic form. And then going up against them. Instead of the dude wearing a, a which, giant overcoat. I mean, it's not good in the comics, but somehow they made it even worse on the show by adding this like, fan. Wait, like, look at this. Psych. He's just wearing a goddamn jacket. What the hell? And Barry's mom, who's actually the speed force, becomes a force. This dude, the time force. Oh my god, and fires a. It was weird as hell! Family dynamic. Barry and Iris start considering the forces their children because they technically made them with the power of their love. Which... As soon as I forgot about that, they're children. Oh, God. Really, really dumb. There are children, Barry. There are children. We made them. Get the fuck out of here. Which is just, I mean, just that sentence is the cringiest thing ever, but the fact that they're calling them their children, they're, like, sacrificing the good and the safety of the entire city because they're their children, it's ridiculous. And, like, Psych calls Barry dad, everyone calls them dad and mom. I mean, it's so weird. Who thought of this? Who's even, like, even though it's the force that's Barry's mom, who's not really Barry's mom, it's kind of weird to call the Speed Force your child when she looks like her dead mother man what idea was this i don't understand it's so so weird that's really the best word to describe it it's just so weird and the speed force also wasn't really great i mean that's another thing they kept not calling her nora that's also it's so weird and so disrespectful to the real nora allen and the fact that barry starts going along with it it's so out of character. Yeah. Between the Force Quest arc and then the Godspeed one, there was like four or five filler episodes, which, I mean, there's a Seal episode, who cares? There's an Allegra episode, one of the worst episodes of the show ever, leaving just four episodes for the Godspeed arc. Four episodes, that's, that's less than a crossover event, that's less than Crisis on Infinite Earths, that's the same as Crisis on Earth X. Four episodes. For a villain that they've been teasing for like years, he debuted in 2016, and ever since then he's been the most requested character on The Flash, in my opinion. And then he finally appeared in a very disappointing episode in season five, but then they teased that that's not the end of the character. He's returned for season six in a really mysterious way, and finally, all that setup came to the ending of season seven, where he's in four episodes. And August Hart didn't even appear in episode 15. The actual character is only going to be appear in at most three episodes and i know they're not continuing it into season eight because season eight will start with a crossover event kind of which has no room for godspeed i'm assuming so i mean i don't understand the structure here obviously the coronavirus affected it a lot yeah but i really only coronavirus. think coronavirus affected the first couple episodes where they had to make it the mirrorverse episodes but then that really left like 15 episodes where they could have had like seven for the force quest if they needed to do the force quest if they want to do filler episodes, then just, like, one. Any more than that is, like, ridiculous. And then that leaves seven or eight episodes for the Godspeeds, which is, like, not even enough for what they deserve. And they got four episodes in the end. And even then, episode 15 dedicated a lot of its screen time to Allegra and Ultraviolet and Chillblade and Frost. And it's like, where the hell has this show gone? What are they doing? I don't know. Hey. At this point, they don't know what they're doing, because fuck. Some of the storylines is just, ugh. Especially when you keep on bringing, uh, you know what? Harrison Wells, I love, like, the actor that plays Harrison Wells is amazing. I can see why they keep on bringing him back, but it's getting to the point, come on, it's like, come on, man, just let him move on from the show, because you bring him back all the time, and he's either Harrison Wells, or he's Harrison Wells from Earth 2, and then there's... Sherlock Harrison Wells, that was kind of funny, and then there's drummer Harrison Wells, who's not a genius but a dumbass. Indiana Jones, Harrison Wells, it just doesn't end. And then he dies and comes back and bullshit, and uh, I don't know anymore, but yeah, that's. I love the actor, but just let him just go. I understand, and I know I said that a lot in this video, but it really baffles me how the show can go from being so good. Like in the first half of season six, to Ew. so bad, so quickly. Bruh.
So in summation, the supporting cast is awful, they take up more screen time than the main character does, and it is ridiculous. The main character also is completely incompetent compared to what he should be. The storylines are Seven awful, years, the fact man. that they dedicate so much to filler is ridiculous, and the fact that they left Godspeed with just four is ridiculous as well. All these things come together to make easily the worst season of The Flash so far, and I hope, hopefully ever but also one of the worst seasons in the Arrowverse. Definitely an F-tier season on par with Arrow Season 4. Now, there are a couple episodes left in the season. I kind of enjoyed Episode 15, just not nearly as much as I wanted to. Oh, but... his future kids. I forgot about that. There's Nora and that, his, her older, younger brother who was just there. Nora was okay. But this dude, I don't know. He, he just came out of nowhere. He's like, hi, I'm, the, I'm your son. What was the episode where like they're in the future? You have to get a story about them too, and he falls in love with this one girl that kind of looked like Cisco's girlfriend in the past. Okay, but if the last couple episodes are good and they do get me excited, then I will say that season seven is a bit better than our season four, maybe a D tier season. But as of right now, if the next of the, of the co next couple episodes are good, which they probably will be just because they have Impulse and Godspeed and Excess and all those characters, but if it really falls flat, then this could be an F-tier season, the first one that The Flash has ever had. But is there a way to fix these problems? I definitely think there is, but I don't think they're going to. I think that they should make Barry more competent and not reliant on the supporting cast. That would obviously make Barry non-incompetent, obviously, but also it would uh, shine some. It would shine less light on the awful supporting cast, so they would be less awful. But also, you might as well improve the supporting cast as well. Cisco and Wells already left, so uh, uh, they should also get rid of Chester and Allegra and Frost and leave the car leave the cast with really just the essentials. Barry, Iris, Joe, and all the other speedster characters that they could bring along, like Wally and Bart and Nora and any other speedster. Bart, that's really, his name. Let's be honest here. We're here for the speedsters. The speedsters have always and they always will be the most interesting characters on the show. They have the most interesting powers. Visually, they look the coolest. And somehow, they also end up being just the best written characters on the show as well. That's really what the show should have focused on from the beginning until the end. And I know the fandom complained about it in season three. The, f the speedster villains have gotten out of hand. We've had too many of them. Savitar was th three in a row. But I could I could confidently say that we, the Flash fandom, was wrong. And we want the speedsters back. Please. Reverse that Flash. That I do not think we're going time. to improve any of this. Just because of how mediocre episode 15 was. I don't think Eric Wallace knows what he's doing. I really don't think that he's ever going to improve the show. And if season 8 is the final season, I don't think it's going to go out on as high of a high note that Arrow did, which is just such a shame. Arrow's last but what season do you think? was... Let me know in the comments down below what you thought... But what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below what you think about Season 7. Uh, do you like it? Do you hate it? Do you think it's better than I give it credit for? Do you think it's even worse than I give it credit for somehow? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you like this video, make sure to leave a like, share, and subscribe. So uh, thanks for double. watching. Goodbye. Alright, so a lot to unpack here. But like, yeah, Season 7... I'm... I haven't seen the last season yet, but I heard that it's not that good. Uh, please don't spoil me because I want to be uh, depressed while watching it. But yeah, season seven was like too many Harrison Wells. I love the actor who plays him because he can do anything. The Flash, like he said, is totally incompetent. He, how, how can he not be on his own by now? It's been seven years. Sure, he needs a team like Superman has Lois and her father. Arrow had his team, and but he still did stuff on his own. He got Diggle with his dumb helmet. I guess even worse every time. Also, Diggle shows up in Superman and Lois in a different multiverse. What's up with Diggle and Gre not being Green Lantern? Is that they just threw that storyline away? The Green Lantern rock comes down. I'm going on a different tangent, but whatever. Well, I'll get back to it. He gets the Green Lantern, goes on to the Flash, talks about it, decides not to be it. Just wasted away but last season seven then uh the adam brandon roof came back which was i was so happy to see him come back for just to team up with flash to take on what's his face the guy that says like i'm gonna get you barry because you're gonna end you're gonna end the world blah 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 that was like the first four episodes of the flash new season 
Oh man, the Arrowverse, just the way, like, I like the Arrowverse. They brought in Supergirl, DC's Legends of Tomorrow, even though that show is totally off the wall, which I love. It has nothing to do with the comics or doing their own thing, but the end of that was Blue Beetle fucking them over and then getting arrested. Even though Blue Beetle does make a cameo appearance in one of the first season, uh, one of the season's first episode. Where he's like the president, I think. I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. Season 7. Other you unwatchable rant. I like Allegra. I like Chester. I don't know why they get to the hate so much. Uh, Killer Frost. He's just there. Has a crush on what's-his-face. That Wolverine-looking dude, but his ice. Joe was just there. And yeah. Flash, come on, man. Like, I, I hope, I hope, but when I hear, like, season eight is not, like, the last season is not even that good. Like I said, I want to watch season, the last season to see how depressing it is by my own eyes. And he has the Flash season eight, still kind of sucks, so I'll be watching that when that's over. Anyways, take it easy, Humanoid Nation. Humanoid out. Bye. Pasito a pasito, suave, suavecito. 